Hey everyone, it's Dr. Mitchell here. We're gonna talk about an interesting case, big concepts here. Autoimmune disease is caused by infections and autoimmune disease can be perpetuated by infections. It's not like conventional rheumatology thinks where there often isn't a bug to chase. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. <coughs> Hard to determine how. Um, and food, food sensitivities isn't forever. So the infection bit, it's really hard to identify and pin down infections. We have all these fancy tests that, you know, these functional providers do and this and that, PCR testing, antibodies, stool testing. None of it's reliable. None of it is reliable at all, especially in patients with autoimmune disease. Do you know why? Because you have a dysregulated immune system. When you have a dysregulated immune system, these antibodies, these findings, they could just be epiphenomena of a dysregulated immune system which means, well, for example, if you're, if you're doing serological testing, looking for these different viruses or bacteria or things like that, your B cells could just be throwing off antibodies. Your B cells could be spazzing out um, for, for reasons that are due to the autoimmune disease rather than there being an infection present. And so um, we can dispense with the idea that we, we're, we're just gonna test you for a bunch of infections and, and that's gonna help us because that, that usually doesn't work for these types of patients. Um, anyway, let's get to this case here. Middle-aged woman diagnosed with lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatology specialists I work with in Gilbert. Um, you know what we call that? We call that rupus. I shit you not, rupus. R-H-U-P-U-S. It's an actual literature term. Okay, so she was diagnosed with this. Uh, severe fatigue, hair loss, brain fog, um, joint pains, some GI issues, um, I think some rashes, and he tried hydroxychloroquine, he tried methotrexate, he tried uh, sulfasalazine, he tried naltrexone, she failed, all of those, rather the drugs failed her. Um, didn't wanna do biologics, so he referred her over to me, uh, put her on some basic supplements. She was already doing autoimmune paleo, but she wasn't doing it right, so we tweaked that for her. She did that for six weeks. She got dramatically better, but she couldn't sustain the diet, and she relapsed. And so, um, you know, we're getting ready to do some of these other things when all of a sudden she develops bacterial vaginosis, and this was kind of a godsend for her. I know, not fun for ladies, but for this lady, it was a good thing that it happened. She went to her gynecologist, she was prescribed metronidazole, also called flagyl, and the BV got better. But along with the BV, all of her manifestations of her rupus cleared up. Okay, and I'm like, what the hell? That's interesting. And then I remembered uh, an article I read, and I forget the MD's name, but I remember the last part of his name, Wyburn Mason, um, who theorized that many cases of rheumatoid arthritis were caused by an amoeba of some sort, and I forget the name of the amoeba, it's really not that important, but metronidazole was one of the treatments and they would treat people with metronidazole long term. Um, and this guy thought that everything was caused by the amoeba, of course, as many of these discoverers do. If you've got rheumatoid arthritis, treat with metronidazole. If you got a dent in your car, treat with metronidazole. Um, I've got a couple dents in my car, maybe I'll try it. Just kidding. Anyway, okay, so she got better. Um, then I said, okay, let's pulse you with metronidazole for a few months. And let's add diflucan for good measure because a lot of people have yeast overgrowth and she had some signs and symptoms of that, which I don't remember. No stool testing needed. And uh, she got dramatically better. After the first few rounds, uh, her GI improved dramatically and um, her, her joint pains and her fatigue and these other things continued to improve. And remarkably, she could tolerate a lot of different foods better. She could eat gluten again. She could go out to the Mexican restaurant, do this and that. This is not hitting me as hard. This is great. And I'm floored because uh, usually when people have food sensitivities, they're a little bit more per pervasive and difficult to deal with. But in her case, it seems that uh, doing something with these antimicrobial agents really, really made a difference for her. And so I just followed up with her uh, a couple days ago. We just finished a round of nitinoxazide, and I'm not remembering exactly why I did that, um, but it didn't really make a difference. But um, 
Where she is now is a far cry from where she was before, and rather than having uh, these symptoms on a daily basis, now the symptoms just seem to flare up um, around her period. So her late luteal phase and early proliferative phase. Uh, so now we're gonna focus on her hormones and uh, keep twe tweaking things along here, but she's doing very, very well. And uh, yeah, it goes back to this idea that a lot of autoimmune diseases can be perpetuated by infections. We don't have good ways to detect these infections again. Um, if anybody tells you that we do and they're relying on tests, they're wrong, they're delusional, they're not doing it right. Um, what else here? Food sensitivities, they're not forever. Um, in a lot of cases, people need to identify them and remove them, stay away from them for some period of time. But what this case illustrates is that it's possible that there is some lever that needs to be pulled, and that can dramatically um, reduce the amount of time uh, that you need to spend avoiding these foods or just make you tolerate them better altogether. And a lot of us do have food sensitivities, and we tolerate them to varying degrees. And so just getting you healthy, healthier overall is going to make you more resilient to them. Um, we'll talk more about the infection bit because it's really interesting, especially as it relates to uh, rheumatoid arthritis. And there's things like this metronidazole uh, treatment and tetracyclines that are really controversial. And the crux is we don't know in each case whether um, infections just set things off or there's a bug that needs to be addressed that continues to perpetuate the disease. So we'll revisit that one. Um, again, food sensitivities aren't forever. And uh, last bit, I recently got strep throat. Never had strep throat in my life. Um, <laughs> very common to get it and not common to, to not get it. Uh, don't wish it on your worst enemies. Maybe I would wish it on somebody, uh, but I haven't met them yet. Yeah, burning the candle at both ends here. Probably need to run away to the Fijian chain, stop this medicine thing, and just be a bartender out there or something. We'll see. Anyway, this is Dr. Mitchell signing off. Very interesting case of rupus, uh, largely re uh, largely resolved by uh, metros pulse metronidazole treatment and a little diflucan. We'll talk again real soon. Hope everybody has a good week here. Bye-bye now.